Acrylamide is a food contaminant. It's not present in the raw ingredients that go to produce foods, but is instead a natural byproduct of cooking and is directly linked to the Maillard reaction, which is responsible for color and flavor development. It forms via a reaction between certain amino acids and sugars, which are naturally present in raw ingredients such as coffee beans, cereals and potatoes. Acrylamide cannot be measured in real time, and even within a finished batch of products there can be significant variations in levels. To reduce both overall levels and variability, manufacturers need to implement mitigation measures and demonstrate improved control over raw materials and production. Unfortunately, there is no single measure that would enable its complete elimination. The new regulation makes it explicit that acrylamide should be managed as part of a food business's food safety management system. Manufacturers should therefore apply a variety of mitigation tools to reduce levels in their products following the principle of as low as reasonably achievable or ALARA for short. The tools which are specifically applicable for potato crisp and snack manufacturers are outlined within Annex 1 of the regulation. Not all the tools will be applicable or effective for every product, but at every stage manufacturers should be able to show that they've taken sufficient steps to manage the issue and to demonstrate how the controls have been considered and, where appropriate, how they have been applied. There are a range of different frying technologies and associated time temperature profiles available to manufacturers depending on their final product design. However, a key item to note is that when a product has reached a very low moisture level, acrylamide levels can increase dramatically in a very short period of time. Therefore, the frying temperature at the end of the frying process, when moisture in the product is at its lowest, becomes a key control and in line with the regulation, it should be kept as low as possible. The maximum target temperature of 168 degrees Celsius in the legislation applies to current products and processes and is based upon what is practically possible for most fryers. However, it is possible that a manufacturer may develop innovative products and processes or else have extenuating circumstances, which means that their specific product requires a different temperature time profile during cooking. The regulation acknowledges this and allows the temperature criterion to be replaced by a more appropriate target, provided that the manufacturer can show that acrylamide levels are lower than the benchmark value and in line with the Alara principle. Alongside raw materials and temperature, the other critical factor for manufacturers is moisture control. The target moisture content of a typical potato crisp product might range between 1.5 and 1.8%. However, moisture levels will vary from design to design and even between individual crisps. Manufacturers may choose to monitor moisture levels using inline moisture meters or use atline near infrared analyzers. Moisture measurement at the exit of the fryer can be used in a closed loop control of the fryer to optimize levels of moisture. This will result in greater product consistency and less waste material. Manufacturers can additionally use inline NIR following the application of seasoning. 
As well as inline technologies, many manufacturers may undertake additional offline confirmatory analysis, most commonly carried using loss on drying methods. Within any batch of product, there will be a degree of natural variation in fried potato colours. But whilst not always related to higher acrylamide levels, extreme colour variation between individual crisps may be the result of tubers which are higher in reducing sugars, either because of natural variability amongst a lot or else due to agronomic storage or handling issues. The legislation requires that manufacturers use colour sorting as a way to identify these darker slices, but it also allows manufacturers the flexibility to use either optical, electronic or manual sorting. Manual sorting may be a suitable control for smaller businesses who do not have high volumes or high throughput on their machinery. It relies on trained individuals observing lines of finished product and manually removing defects. By contrast, optical electronic sorters can process significant volumes of finished product at high speeds with a high level of reliability, looking for colour and other defects and rejecting product which does not meet the program specifications. Colour sorting is a good way to reduce the chance of individual products with higher acrylamide levels from being placed on the market. However, as sorting occurs post-fryer, it is not technically an acrylamide mitigation step. Manufacturers should not rely on it as a control and the focus should always be on the whole product chain, from selecting the correct raw material and appropriate storage and handling, through product design and controls applied within processing. Music